Hello and welcome to Neighborhood Nature. I'm Lisa and I'm a librarian at St. Albert Public Library and we have with us again our guest today is Hannah who is a University of Alberta student in animal biology. So I hope you've all been enjoying the warm sunny weather. Definitely feels like spring now and many of the birds we talked about in the last episode are back now. Like this robin hiding at the top of a tree. We haven't heard the robins sing yet but once they do it's a sign that nesting will begin soon. And the ducks are back now too. And here's a male looking very fancy. So this is just a single male, but you might also see a pair with a male and a female, and they'd be traveling together looking for a nesting place. Here's a bird that stays all year round, and one that you can find at your feeder. It's called a house finch. This is a male. Females are brown. Right now, he's eating some sunflower seeds. Finches have big beaks that make opening seeds easy. See how the two halves of the shell separate and are dropped? Now this is playing in the slow motion. They don't actually eat that slow, but we wanted you to be able to see it. So this is the same house finch you saw in the previous clip. House finches eat other things besides seeds, like the buds of this hawthorn tree. And just like you saw in the clip before, he's dropping pieces everywhere and got bits hanging out his beak. They're kind of messy eaters. Another bird you might see at your feeder are house sparrows. And these, like house finches, also eat seeds, like this one here is doing. And how can you tell if it's a male or a female? Well, this one's a male because he's got white cheeks and black patterning on his face, which the females don't have. They're very noisy birds. You can often hear them chirping in a big flock. Besides seeing house sparrows at feeders, you might also see them in small flocks, hopping around on lawns and sidewalks and picking up seeds and small insects. They can be very noisy birds, especially if they're all chirping in a big flock. They sure are, especially in the morning when they're sitting in your bush outside your window. So here's one of my favorite birds. It's a nuthatch. And you can see it's feeding on suet, but they also like black sunflower seeds too. Nuthatches have a really distinctive call, and I've heard Hannah rumor that you do a very good imitation of one. Can you do sure. one? So if you hear that in your neighborhood, that is definitely a nut hatch. And not me. <laughs> Uh-oh, looks like someone else is hungry too. This is a merlin, which is a small falcon that sometimes preys on feeder birds. They can be found in neighborhoods. This one has been hanging out in our neighborhood this past week. So this one's either a female or, or a young bird because it's brown. Now something you may have noticed with all the warm weather are the bugs that are starting to appear again. Now some of you might not like bugs because they can bite or sting or look gross but many of them will not bite your sting and they look very cool. For example, butterflies. Some kinds of butterflies overwinter as adults instead of caterpillars, so once the weather is warm, they start flying around. An example is the mooring cloak butterfly. Mooring cloaks have big dark patches on their wings. Their undersides are patterned so they blend in when they're resting. This one's on a bench and so it's not blending in very well, but it works when the butterfly is on a tree or on the ground. Another butterfly you might see around this time is the Compton's tortoiseshell. It's big and it's orange and it has two white spots on its wings. This one was sunning itself on a tree. The cabbage white butterfly overwinters as a pupa, which is a caterpillar surrounded by a cocoon. If you grow cabbage or kale or, or other brassicas, you might know this butterfly is the one that eats your plants. Another kind of insect you might see are ladybugs, especially if you just raked your lawn recently and found them hiding under the leaves. The most common ones are with seven spots, like this one here, or two spots. There are also pink, yellow, black, and brown ones too. And they have a few different names, ladybird, ladybug, and lady beetle. Ladybugs are known for being good for your garden because they eat aphids, which are little tiny bugs that will suck the juices out of your plants. Some of the water insects are out too. This is a water strider found in a large puddle. Right now it's just drifting along, but there it goes. They can skim around very quickly. They have special bristles on their feet that make it possible for them to float on the surface of the water. This is a stonefly we found in our backyard. The young live in water and don't have wings, so this is an adult. The two tails on the end aren't stingers and it can't bite, which is why it's on my hand. They're not as graceful flyers as butterflies, but they manage. Something you can participate in as a whole family is called Global Big Day. This is by Cornell University through the Cornell Lab. It happens on May 9th. And what it is, it's where you can spend even just 10 minutes in your backyard recording what birds you see. 
and where you record these for Global Break Day is on eBird. eBird you can access online or you can access it through the app and that is happening on May 9th. Again, that is not specific to St. Albert, that is out of Cornell University. See the comment below this video on our Facebook page for more information. Thanks for watching St. Albert Public Library's Neighborhood Nature. We hope you get a chance to go outside and explore nature in your neighborhood and we look forward to seeing you next Wednesday night at 7.